Hello students, um, since we don't have classes because of this sudden suspension due to coronavirus, we'll be having our lessons here um, using YouTube. So I hope everyone's doing well and you're doing, um, you're actually studying your lessons. So with room 10, we did not begin anything yet, especially with the uh, um, theories forwarded by um, Sigmund Freud um, and Carl Jung, nothing yet. But with room 11, we started already. But um, to level things off, we will discuss all of this by part or by segments. So for the first segment, we'll be discussing for Sigmund Freud. So, um, <clears throat> since I don't have PowerPoint with me, I will be forwarding to you a copy of the PowerPoint so you are also gu guided. Um, but I have a printed copy of the PowerPoint here. So, just for me to be able to explain to you the contents of the PowerPoint presentation. So, we begin with this slide. This above all, to thine own self be true, and it must follow as a night the day thou cast not then be false to any man. Um, when we try to be somebody, when we try to achieve a goal, sometimes we would exert so much effort realizing that goal. But in the process of realizing a certain goal that we intended to um, pursue, um, sometimes we lose track of who we are. Sometimes we also um, tend to be what detach really from what we intend to be. And so according to William Shakespeare in the very classic um, play Hamlet, um, what's the goal? What's the sense of us being able to realize something if in the process we lose ourselves? But then the question is, who are we really? And if you go back to our discussion last week, the adolescents, um, 11 to 21 years old, they are confronted with a lot of questions, especially with regards, as regards their individual in the identity, as regards who they are. They are confused. They are uh, seeking affirmation with friends, company, peers. But in the process, who are we really? Who are you really? Um... Well, it's also said in the second slide, what can we gain by sailing to the moon if we are not able to cross the abyss that separates us from ourselves? What do we gain if ever, for example, we are able to achieve something, if you are able to accomplish something, but in the process, really, do not understand the very reason why we were able to accomplish these things. Did we become somebody just because we were able to uh, gain accolades or... Um, acceptance or affirmation from people or what is the more important thing if you go back to Abraham Maslow's um, hierarchy of needs at the end really the, the greatest need a man has is for self-actualization and we can never actualize things unless we really know who we are and so it's very important for us to learn about the theory of self-awareness. What is self-awareness? According to Duval and Wuchlan, when we focus our attention on ourselves, evaluate and compare our current behavior to our internal standards and values, we become self-conscious as objective evaluators of ourselves. So when we are self, when we have a level of self-awareness, it is not just that we know who we are. Knowledge that is not merely theoretical, it's not just cognitive, but rather it is being able to gauge whether or not we are actually meeting um, the expectations we set for ourselves. It is us being able to compare this ideal version of who we want and this real version of who we are. Um, Self-awareness is whether or not we are able to go in touch, to be in touch with who we really are as persons. Another, another thing, self-awareness, according to Goldman, is recognizing a feeling as it happens. Um, are we able to recognize the fact that we are at times really angry, that we are at times happy, or that we are at times wanting attention or affirmation, or we just keep on denying just because we want to be, what, part of the greater whole? We don't want to be out 
ostracized or outcast. We want to be accepted. But self-awareness, continuing with the definition of Goldman, is the keystone of emotional intelligence. How well are we aware that this is actually what we are undergoing and how are we able to affirm that these are the situations or the states we are in? Furthermore, it is the ability to monitor feelings from moment to moment and it's crucial to psychological insight and self-understanding. An inability to notice our true feelings leaves us at their mercy. So, for example, we are not able to really go in touch or be in touch with uh, what we are feeling or experiencing at a certain moment. So what happens is that we just try to fit in to what popular opinions would say or would require us to believe in or act upon. So self-awareness is having that conviction of knowing who we are. It is having that conviction of recognizing this is where I am situated right now. It is not just a physical situation. It is not just a physical placement. It's not just theoretical. It's not just cognitive. But more importantly, it's a holistic way of looking at who we are as persons. Now, there are three people we'll be discussing. So we have Sigmund Freud, and then we have um, Alfred Adler, and we have Carl Jung. But in the meantime, we'll work first on Sigmund Freud. What do we know about Sigmund Freud? Well, with Room 11, I discussed to them that Sigmund Freud is one of the masters of suspicion. Well, for the longest time, people thought that the human person is merely a spiritual creature, a spiritual being. And then suddenly, um, during the 19th century, the last part of the 19th century, um, Sigmund Freud came and he would emphasize man is not just spiritual rather if we want to understand who he is we have to look at the different aspects of his personality and we can say also that very much this personality is influenced or shaped by him being a sexual creature that's why uh, one um sigmund freud is one of the proponents of the psychosexual uh, way of looking at the human person so according to him, um, there are three levels of um, the human person, okay? 